The Gophers kick off the summer with a huge splash with four commits after the first OV and then top 10 Tuesdays who are the top 10 most important players for 2023. You are locked on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Uh, Golden Gophers. However it turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday, when we are in season. But right now, it is the summer, the off season, and we've slowed it down just a tiny bit to Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Now, it is Tuesday, and you know what that means. It is top 10. Tuesday, and we are going to be talking about the top 10 most important players to the Minnesota Gophers football team in 2023. But before we do that, we have to talk about the summer splash that the Gophers have made with their first official visit this past weekend, and it was a splash indeed. You've got four, that's right, four new Minnesota commits. From this official visit weekend, three on defense, one on offense, and 19 total commits for the class of 2024 thus far. Now, the first one we're going to talk about right away is Mike Gerald, a cornerback out of Texas. Now, his process has been very quick so far. He had been camping out at the Houston and TCU major football camps this uh, summer, actually. And he at that camp, he showed out a bit. And he got offers from Utah, from Kansas State, from Minnesota, UTSA, and many more. And so, you know, you look at what he did as a junior, played on both sides of the ball, plus on special teams as a returner. But on the offensive side of the ball, he got 24 passes for 522 yards and nine touchdowns, along with rushing the ball 60 times on, th- or 60 times, three times with 60 yards on those three carries. Overall, he also threw the ball. So he was a do-it-all guy for this Texas squad down there. Threw the ball 9 for 15 on pass attempts for 116 yards and a touchdown. He's an all-around athlete. You love to see that. But the reason the Gophers are focused on him is more on the defensive side of things. He recorded 14 tackles and one forced fumble as a junior. But it's the ability, it's the build, it's the size, it's the athleticism, which peaked his, the interest on him for many of these schools. Now, the best part that I saw mentioned by a friend of the show, Ryan Burns, is that his recruiting is shut down. He is now set to really hone in, lock in. He wants to go to summer school, get some summer classes, so that way he can graduate early, come December, and then be here with the Gophers next January. He's all locked in and wants to get ready and going and ready to contribute for the Gophers as soon as possible. So a huge addition for him, but he was not the only corner to commit. You move on over to Samuel Madu. I hopefully I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I will be by the time he gets here next year. Now, Samuel was the number one cornerback in New York. He has offers from Michigan State, Purdue, Penn State, Uh, Duke and Missouri. Now, also, he shut down his recruitment as well, and he's locked in. He seems extremely connected to Coach Nick Monroe, along with Coach Joe Rossi, along with Coach Fleck. Seems like he got to talk with them a lot on his official visit here, got to bind with them a lot. He is determined on wanting to bring a national championship to Minnesota. His drive, his build, his athleticism, he brings a whole lot as a package, as a cornerback here to the Minnesota Gophers as well. So six six foot one, nice size on him, 170 pounds. He'll likely get stronger, get heavier, heading into the strength and conditioning program next year with the Gophers as well. Definitely a player that is still getting his full evaluations from the rankers and the scout or the high school prospect scouts out there as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see his his ranking 
tick up a bit as he gets more eyes on him looking at his junior tape and his senior tape to come. Now, like I said, the huge reasons on why he was wanting to come here was not only to bring a national championship, not only to be able to hopefully get into the conversation for playing time from jump, but also because of those great relationships with Coach Fleck, with Coach Monroe. And you know what? It's not just him, but Coach Monroe and Coach Debo were in a New York state of mind, bringing in another commit from New York as well with Samuel Madu. And that is on the defensive line side of both. Still defense, defensive line as opposed to the D-backs, and that is Jalen Hicks. He comes from New York, had other offers like Penn State, like Wake Forest, like Syracuse, and like Boston College. Now, he is six foot four, 250, great size on him, and he's still growing. So, dude could be a physical specimen and a monster as he heads into his senior year of high school football. Now he could play both inside defensive lineman as a three tech or outside of def- outside defensive lineman as a five tech as well. He's gotten a little bit of both in the high school space, brings versatility to the position for the Gophers in this class. Two hands in the ground type of guy. He finishes through his win tackling, had some sacks on the year last year, nice block shed, uses his size, which you love to see at that six foot four, 250. But if he keeps growing, that could be even bigger for the Gophers next year as well. Now, he has very nice speed for his size as well. That is something that pops off on his tape. He is the fifth defensive lineman committed to the Gophers in this class of 2024. Now, the first thing I saw once you start to see those names keep arising on the defensive line is a Gopher fan was concerned and saying, does this mean we're absolutely out on Wyatt Gilmore? No, that does not mean that, not in the slightest. Now, not only does Wyatt Gilmore have good connections with the class here, it seems like he was connecting with a lot of these guys that were at the official visit and some of the guys that were already committed from interstate. But overall, it doesn't take them out of that conversation because defensive line is probably the most rotated position of any position in football, especially at the collegiate level. Now, it is pertinent to keep fresh legs on the field in different Uh, rushing strengths and different shedding abilities to get after the quarterback, wear down offensive linemen, make them uncomfortable, and win in the trenches. Now, Minnesota, for the past at least two, three years now, has often rotated between eight-plus guys on that defensive line, depending on the package, depending on the scenario, depending on what they're trying to do in a given situation. And these guys got to have fresh fresh legs and ready to go. So you absolutely love to see the talent and the consistent ability across the entire class. And you love to see the trajectory of five defensive linemen, hopefully six with Wyatt Gilmore in the future coming here with a new defensive line coach who has really re-energized these prospects and re-energized the defensive line in general. Now, overall, I am excited about Jalen Hicks, I think he could be a great addition for the Gophers, but he was not the only or final commit. We've talked about three now. There were four. That's right. I said four that committed, and that fourth one was the newest commit, Jacob Simpson, tight end from Iowa. Other offers included Cincinnati, Illinois, Louisville, Texas Tech, and Missouri. Now, he has receiving prowess, but I definitely think he's going to need to continue to get Uh, better or develop more in the blocking aspects of his game to continue to be a tight end as well at 210 pounds six foot five love that 210 pounds he's definitely going to need to get stronger and add weight to stay at that tight end but the size is there the pass catching ability is there and the elements to be good at the tight end position are all there now neither Iowa State or Iowa have officially offered. So I'd be interested to see, is he fully locked in with the Gophers if a hometown offer comes in or could they steal him away? My hope is that he is locked in and he would pair really nicely with Julian Johnson. It gives them two big high upside tight ends to try and answer the question of what this Gophers program will do after Brevin Spanford is gone. So you know what? A lot of promising recruits, a lot of awesome commits 
in this official visit. Now, other people that were here on campus include Emerson Mandel, who is one of the top kids in the state. Wyatt Gilmore, who is one of the top kids in the state. There's Dewan Riggs, who is a running back prospect from D.C. that was in town as well. So we'll keep our eyes posted and keep our ear to the ground on what we hear with those prospects as well. But they might likely will be going to other visits, and that doesn't mean Minnesota is out of the race. That just means it's going to take more time. Probably won't hear more on those guys until July. But that's not the only reason we are here. We are also here because it is Top 10 Tuesday, and we've got a good one for you today. We've talked about the future with these commits in the class of 2024, but now it's time to focus on the here and now. We're talking the 10 most important players to the Minnesota Gophers in the 2023 season. You're not going to want to miss this, and I think I'm going to catch you by surprise with this bad boy. But first, before we do that, let's jump in and talk about our friends over at FanDuel.com. You need to head on over to FanDuel.com slash locked on today and make sure to take a advantage of a no sweat first bet if you have not already joined over at FanDuel.com because they have something going on for their new customers is that no sweat first bet. And what it means is if you get your first bet wrong, you can still win up to $2,500 back in bonus bets now if i was you i would be going over there and i would be checking out that nebraska and minnesota game because the line is already out for that bad boy but you know i brought up the heisman race as well i've thrown out my candidates of the ones that i like with the lines that they're at right now marvin harrison is there with the sixth highest line and then if you want a deep sleeper i'm jumping on the spencer rattler train now i know i know Sounds a little scary, but with the odds he's at and with what we saw to close out the season, that's where my mind is for the Heisman race right now. So if you want to take a shot at that or take a shot at others, go on over to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to take advantage of a no sweat first bet today. All right, Gopher fans. Now, we've talked about it time and time again, but it is Top 10 Tuesday. I thank you for listening each and every day of the week during the in-season. I thank you for listening to the, each of the shows three times in these off-season, three times a week as well. All the everydayers, I appreciate all the comments you drop in the comments over on YouTube, I guess. And uh, thank you, but I want to know what you want to hear for a Top 10 Tuesday in a future show. Today, we're talking the top 10 most important players for the Gophers in the 2023 season, and we're going to wait no further. We're going to jump right in. Now, let's talk about a couple honorable mentions before we hit the top 10. First one I want to bring up is Carter Shaw. He saw the second highest graded offensive lineman in the Minnesota program with no minimum stats, so you didn't have to make a certain threshold for your grade to count like PFF does on some of its uh, posts that it puts out there on Twitter, but he had 81.2 overall, which is phenomenal. Then you go, he's great in the run block game, and he should be an asset that will be utilized, that run blocking strength, if he is to play at the left guard position, which is what my gut is telling me right now. Another guy I got to bring up in the honorable mention is Martez Lewis, best pass blocker, Gopher in 2022. If y'all been listening with us here at Locked On Golden Gophers for a while now, you know I am a big fan and honestly questioned why he wasn't starting last year. Now, I think he could be a strong asset if he can win that right tackle position this year. And looking forward to him. Two other honorable mentions, Kyler Baugh, Danny Strigow. Both these defensive linemen have shown growth. They've shown development. They've been stepping up more and more as vocal leaders. I don't know how to gauge Danny Strigow's role, so I wasn't able to get him into the top 10, but I do think he'll play an important part for the Gophers. Kyler Baugh has been a guy mentioned over and over and over again by Coach Devo, so I expect him to be a big player for the Gophers in that interior line and especially in the run defense. Now let's talk about the top 10 overall, and we are jumping right in. Now I could have put a lot of players in this 10th position, but I think Devin Eastern holds some of the most upside for the entire defense when it comes to what the Gophers are trying to do. That said, if Minnesota wants to continue to be a top 10 def- or a top defensive unit, 
They need pressure from the interior defensive line to help their edge rushers get to the passer, get home quicker, and create some sacks, some hits, and generate some problems as a pressure. So you need it coming from the inside to help your outside guys as well. That's where I think you can enter Devin Eastern. I truly believe in him rising into his potential and that confidence while clicking with Coach Debo played a factor in trail leaving. That is my thought. That is my assumption. That is my guess from what things I have heard because Devin Eastern was coming in one way or another. Now, if Devin Eastern can find his inner confidence and play with that swagger on a consistent basis, I think he could be a game changer for the Gophers and for this defense. Him on the inside, and I feel about the same way about Anthony Smith on the outside as well. His length and his size can create havoc, not only as an interior pass rusher, but also in the run game. Now, we're going to move on to number nine, and that is none other than Jack Henderson. Now, I realize that I'm blocking his name here, but you can see who it is, and I'm talking about him now, so we're not going to fret too much about that. But Jack Henderson is a dog, is a dude. Flip Dixon and his role here were huge for the defense in 22, but it's part of the reason why folks were freaking out about him transferring and what the Gophers would do. That's when Jack Henderson and Han- Jack Henderson answered the call, and he put a lot of those worries to ease. Now, you can see his effectiveness in the pass defense, the run defense, the coverage, and the blitz game solely from the spring. You can see he is a huge big-time contributor, and you can see his effectiveness in those areas, but you see the flashes that quickly in all of those areas this soon, and it tells you the importance that he will bring coming into the 2023 season. Now, the coaching staff is absolutely hyped about him as well. And according to PFF last year, he played a whopping 833 snaps. He was on the field at all times. And that many snaps, you would expect his grade, and it would still be a very great grade to be in the mid to higher 70s just because there could be minor miscues. There could be a big play here and there that could get credited his way. But no, this man finished with an 84.7 defensive grade, 84 run defensive grade, 91.4 pass rushing grade, and an 80.5 coverage grade. He was able to do it all in games just like we saw in the spring. Now we're heading on over to number eight, and that is none other than Nathan Bow. I think Nathan Bow is going to be a critical player for the Gophers in this upcoming season. Now he has big time shoes to fill with John Michael Schmitz, but overall he looked good filling in for the Gophers throughout the last season. He saw snaps at both the guard spot and the center spot. He played 215 total snaps last year, so he saw a heavy amount of snaps. I'm guessing he just missed the cut for some of those PFF graphics you see out there for best returning offensive linemen, because I'm guessing that has 250 to 300 snaps. So he just missed the cut on that one. But if he hadn't, he would have been one of the top two highest graded players returning to the Big Ten from that offensive line because he finished with a grade of 85.2, an offensive grade. That's phenomenal. That is great. And that's why I don't expect a lot of worry on my end from him at that center position. He is a staple. He is a vet. He is a six-year guy. And, you know, an 83.4 run blocking and an 80.5 pass blocking, he got it done in both facets. He is a strength for this offensive line. He'll hold it together. He will be starting. It's just a matter of where I think it'll be at the center position. But Carter Shaw is still in that battle as well. Now, he's a great overall all around. He's great all around. And honestly, I expect him to shock a lot of folks outside of Minnesota that don't know too much from him. They're going to be like, what is Minnesota going to do? John Michael Schmitz is gone. They won't have anybody to fill that. No, they do. And it's Nathan Bow, which is why he comes in at number eight on this list. Moving on to number seven, and we've got none other than Ja Joyner. Now, Ja Joyner led the team in pass rush last year, eighth returning player grade-wise according to PFF in Big Ten when it comes to pass rushers returning. And he has the pressures. He had 32 last year, but we need to see it turn into more hits. We need to see it turn into more sacks, where he had six QB hits last year and one and a half sacks. Now he was the second highest graded player returning to Minnesota on the defensive side of ball with a 76.6 overall and unlocking that pass rushing ability, unlocking 
his confidence and the ability to actually get home with the speed, the bend, and the moves that he's got. Unlocking that could really elevate this defense, so it's why he is one of the more important players heading into the next season coming in at number seven. Now, number six, we've got two. I couldn't split it up, and we've got Quinn Carroll. We've got Ariante Ursary, the two returning starters from last year on this O-line. It's hard for me to just put a guard by himself as the most important offensive lineman, so I have a tie. And you might be like, what are you talking about a guard? Quinn Carroll played tackle. Well, all spring, he was kicked into the right guard position. I think he will thrive in that position. It will play to his strengths of being a better run blocker as well. QC is the fifth highest graded returning offensive lineman, according to PFF, uh, coming from the Big Ten. And this has to be, like I said, with a minimum of like 250, 300 snaps or something because Bo had a higher grade, but still great grade with a 76.0 overall. And he will play a massive role for this defense He's, or offensive line, not defense, but he will be critical for the Gophers and holding down the fort and creating uh, uh blocking and opportunities for his quarterback and the run game moving forward. I think the move inside is going to elevate his game as well. And then you've got Ariante Ursary. Ursary was touted as one of the most offensive linemen that Coach Fleck has ever coached or worked with. And we need to see him take more strides in that department. He has all the talent. He has all the ability. But we got to see it start connecting, especially as he is protecting the QB's blind side at that left tackle position. He had a pass blocking grade of 64.7, which is fine. But we'd like to see that tick up in this next season. Now, his overall grade of 61.6 is not rough, but it's not amazing. It's probably average in the department and he gave up two sacks on 10 hurries last year so you got to see more from him because he has the talent of an NFL level upside guy but you need to see it on the field heading into the 2023 season now that's the top uh, or the back half of our top 10 we're going to dive into the remaining top five most important gophers and that is what's coming up next do not miss all right, Gophers fans, we're jumping into the top five. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe over on YouTube. But let's jump into the top five. Now, the top five for us here at Locked On Golden Gophers, heading into the most important players. Number five comes Cody Lindenberg. That's right. Cody was the unquestioned, he's an unquestioned leader on the defense, a face of this defense. His potential in this linebacker room could be one of the highest we've seen under Coach Fleck in the linebacker room overall. Health is pertinent. When it comes to Cody Lindenberg, we've seen the upside when healthy and an all Big Ten honorable mention player last year, 71 tackles, which was good for second on the team, only behind Mariano Sarimiron. And guess what? He wasn't even a starter until about halfway through the season. So the upside is there. The potential is there because as those snaps ticked up, the tackles did as well. Give him a full year with full health as a starter and a leader on this defense, and he could put up some crazy numbers over the next year or two. The force he plays with, the speed he plays with, he is just all over the field in a blur, in a flash, and so you love him. You love the swagger, the mentality, the grit that he brings, and he also has a solid pass rush ability as well, very versatile, so he comes in at number five for us on this top ten list. Moving on to number four. It's Brevin Spanford. Now, I wanted to put him in the top three, but uh, I couldn't quite put him in the top three, and we'll get to why with the next player. Now, Brevin Spanford is going to be a major player, one of the most key players on the offensive side of the ball. He came back for a reason, and that is to continue to show up and show out for this Gophers offense and help get his name called on draft day next year as well. Brevin Spanford is a monster. He is a beast. He's a mismatch nightmare for folks. And I think the Gophers started to realize that throughout the entirety of last year. Now they did it sporadically, but you pair it with a QB talent that likes to sling this thing and the shifting of the offense from ground heavy to maybe a more balanced approach. That means Brevin Spanford should see more opportunities. On top of that, you've got a phenomenal wide receiver core. You've got a deep wide receiver core. You've got some vets coming back. You've got some transfers coming in. You've got some young talent stepping up. All of that should create more opportunities, more availabilities, more openness for Brevin Spanford because the defensive backs aren't going to be able to cover all these guys at once. You talk about he already presents a mismatch, and then you're talking about 
the top nickels or the top corners are still going to have to worry about the guys in the slot because I think Daniel Jackson could be playing the slot. Corey Crooms could be playing in the slot. You're going to have to worry about those guys and put one of your best nickels over that way. Then you're going to have to look outside and deal with an Elijah Spencer with a uh, Chris Hyman Bell. You're Lamecky Brockington. You're going to have to put talented guys on those on those outside receivers, and that leaves you with Brevin Spanford with a lot of opportunities across the middle, lining up outside, lining up in line. Brevin Spanford could go crazy even with the more talented pass catchers, and that's why he comes in at number four. I'm expecting a lot, and plus, he already showed his elements of importance in the blocking game as well, and I would expect that to continue in the 2023 season. Now, moving into the top three, in number three, we've got Justin Wally. Now, uh, like I said, I wanted to put Brevin Sanford in that top three, but I have stressed all offseason how important the cornerbacks are going to be with our upcoming schedule and with the QB gauntlet we will be facing this season. No one is bigger in that room than Justin Wally, and he'll likely take on the toughest challenges and be looked to for guidance, looked to for communication, looked to for leadership. So I had to get him in here as the top three most important players because he is going to be a huge key for the Gophers defense to have success in this next year. Now, an 80.1 coverage grade, highest returning, 77.6 defensive grade, highest returning for the Gophers, even higher than a player ahead of him on this list, he will have to improve on his six missed tackles. He's got to get home more consistently. Can't be shaken off. Can't be <clears throat> missed arm bars or anything like that. He's got to cut down on the missed tackles, but he had zero touchdowns given up. Even after being targeted 47 times last year, he is a very key player for the Gophers, a staple of consistency for the Gophers, and hopefully it will continue to see him create turnovers as well. He had three interceptions last year. So uh, Justin Wally big time guy for the Gophers heading into the next season. And moving on to number two, we've got Tyler Newbin. Tyler Newbin, you knew he was going to be up here in the top two, had to get him in there. He is the upside of the defense. It all funnels through Tyler Newbin. The energy of the defense runs through Tyler Newbin. The confidence, the swagger of the defense run through Tyler Newbin and the most game changing plays on the defensive side of ball typically run through Tyler Newbin. It's safe to say he is the heart and the soul of this defense and maybe even of the entire Gophers program in 2023. He is the QB, the quarterback of the defense, and there's a reason that some have him mocked as the first-round pick in the NFL draft next year. A 76.4 defensive grade. He's forced fumbles along the way, had eight interceptions in his career so far with the Gophers. They've been huge, and he's easily the most important player on the defense and came back for a reason. He'll be a man on a mission, and I cannot wait to see him absolutely ball out, hopefully get to that Big Ten first team and maybe even an All-American as we move forward with this top 10 defensive unit that Coach Rossi has continued to turn out over the past couple of seasons. But that leaves us with our number one player, which I'm assuming a lot of you guessed, and that is Ethan Kaliak Manis, QB1 of the Gophers. Now, he is a high risk, high reward player so far. He has four big time throws last year in his limited opportunities but also has four turnover-worthy plays. The completion percentage has to increase. He was in the 50s last year. I believe it was at about 54 55%. But we all know the upside. We've seen it, and he can continue to, with more opportunity, I think he'll have better completion rates, and I think he'll have better uh, analysis, awareness, and reaction time, see the field a bit better, which should create more opportunities for him. Now, there will be ups and downs in this first year as a starter. I do anticipate that, but the upside and the talent that he brings really should keep the Gophers in every game. Now, like I said, there will be learning moments, but I think his talent gives the Gophers a shot at any game if he is firing on all cylinders. Now, that isn't to say, none of this isn't to say that he is the best player on the roster. Now, could he be? Absolutely. The upside is there. But I, what I am saying is he is the most important player on the roster for the Gophers to have success in 2023. So that's the list here. That is the list for your uh, top 10 most important Gophers of the 2023 season. Now, notice I didn't list a single wide receiver because I truly think that the depth 
there makes the position harder to evaluate as far as who would be the most important. You can spread the ball all around. If an injury happens, there are nice options regardless of any situation. So it's hard to put any of those guys in the top 10 most important because there's so much depth to step up if someone needs to step up. I also didn't list a single running back because this running back room is more than likely going to be a rotation and a system over an absolute workhorse like we've seen in Mo Ibrahim over the last couple of years. I truly think we're going to see a group of four, depending on the situation between Bryce Williams, between Zach Evans, between Sean Tyler. Those guys will probably see a majority of it, but I do think Darius Taylor could work his name into this conversation. Maybe that could change as the year goes on. But overall, we're going to have to wait and see, which is why I didn't get the, any of them in the top 10 for this one. That is going to do it for us here at Locked On Golden Gophers. I appreciate you listening. Let me know what other top 10 Tuesday topics you want to hear in the comments below or feel free to email them as well. And be sure to subscribe. Row the boat, Sky Yuma, Go Gophers, and always subscribe on YouTube.